Hey, it's Marcus and Pentec, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Logitech G915 TKL. It's from Logitech's G series line aimed at gamers and is a cut down version of the original G915. For those wondering what TKL stands for, it means 10 keyless, so say bye bye to the number pad and hello to more mouse movement measuring at only 368 millimeters in length. It's also crazy thin for a mechanical keyboard, measuring at only 22 millimeters in height. It's a wireless keyboard featuring Logitech's light speed technology, which promises to deliver only one millisecond of latency. The G915 is available in three flavors. GL Clicky, giving an audible click and tactile feedback. GL Tactile, which is a gentle bump for some tactile feedback. And GL Linear, which is a completely smooth keystroke. I went with Geo Clicky, which I think is going to be most people's choice when buying this keyboard. The keys have an actuation distance of 1.5 millimeters and an actuation force of 50 grams, with a total travel distance of 2.7 millimeters. It wouldn't be a gaming keyboard without RGB, and the G915 TKL is no exception. It uses Logitech's LightSync RGB technology that offers 16.8 million colors and the ability to customize lighting across every key. In the box, you get the keyboard, obviously, a braided micro USB cable, we'll talk more on that later, a quick start guide, a Logitech sticker, the light speed adapter, and a micro USB adapter. I've been using this keyboard for around a week now, and in this video, we're gonna go over my experience using it. I used it primarily for software development and some light PC gaming. I'll be honest, I don't really play PC games too much, so bear that in mind with this review. But on the flip side, I'll offer my in-depth insight as to what this keyboard is like for productivity. So right off the bat, I'm surprised. I've been using this keyboard for mostly work and I can honestly say I'm really impressed with it. So much so that I think it's actually going to replace my full-sized Apple Magic Keyboard. I've been using MacBook keyboards for the past 12 years now, and I've always considered their keyboards, barring the butterfly switch keyboards that were on the last generation of MacBooks, to be the gold standard of keyboards, hands down. I like how they feel, I like the travel, just everything really, and typing on anything else just really feels unnatural to me. But ladies and gentlemen, I can honestly say that this keyboard has changed everything for me. I immediately felt comfortable typing with this. Normally, when I use keyboards that are alien to me, I really struggle to find that confidence of using it straight away. And by confidence, I mean not having to look down or second guess what I'm typing every so often. So the travel. I think it's just the right amount for me. Usually, when I'm using a mechanical gaming keyboard, I find that the travel is just too much and the keys are just way too tall. But with a G915 and its thin design and low profile, I find it to be a happy middle ground between tall keys with too much travel and ultra low profile keys with not enough. Surprisingly though, or maybe not so surprising since I've used Apple keyboards for well over a decade now. I did typing tests on both keyboards and on average, I scored 58 on the Apple Magic keyboard and 55 on the G915. It's not much difference, but I'm sure once I've got more experience using the G915, I'd definitely be able to get that score up. One thing I thought I'd miss is the number pad, since I use keyboards mostly for work. But again, I was surprised. I did find myself wanting to type numbers on the number pad a few times, but not too often. Instead, I realized that I was naturally placing my mouse closer to the keyboard where the number pad would have been, so that my arms weren't as stretched out when working. The shortcut keys are nice, and I especially liked how you could switch between Bluetooth and Lightspeed Wireless. I set it up so I have Lightspeed connected to my PC and Bluetooth connected to my MacBook. And whilst we're on the subject of Bluetooth, one feature I would have liked to see is the ability to connect to multiple Bluetooth devices and easily switch between them. On the other hand though, I can see that Logitech really put a lot of thought and design into making the volume wheel. It's perfectly placed so that when I want to quickly adjust the volume, I can do it without even having to look for the correct media keys. Since it's placed at the top right of the keyboard near where my mouse hand would be, I find myself just leaning my thumb over to adjust it when needed. Nice. Using Logitech's G Hub software, you can pretty much configure everything about the keyboard. With LightSync, you can choose from a variety of preset effects and customize their speed and brightness. Using the freestyle menu, you can configure how each key behaves, so maybe you'd want to highlight all of your game keys, for example. What's also good about this feature is that you can save presets, so you could have one for each game or app. In the animations menu, there are more presets for you to use, and also adjust to your liking. You can also create your own animations too. 
For functionality, you can create custom commands, macros, keys, in-app actions, and system actions. There is also a game mode which allows you to disable certain keystrokes, so maybe you'd want to disable the Windows or Function keys, for example. Battery life for me has been fine. Logitech says that the battery can last up to 40 hours with RGB on, and I've been using it for five days now, and I still haven't charged it yet. This is nowhere near as much as my Apple keyboard. I've owned that thing since the start of 2020, and I can honestly say I've only charged it like two or three times. But really, it's not an issue since you can still use this keyboard while it's charging. One crime that Logitech has committed is using micro USB for the charging port. Why? Just why? It's 2020. This would have been a crime two years ago. In my opinion, there's no excuse now for using micro USB instead of USB-C. So Logitech, your MX Master Series mice now use USB-C. So why did this have to miss out? You've even gone through the effort of supplying us with a nice braided micro USB cable too, so you definitely weren't skimping out on the costs here. Anyway, rant's over. For gaming, it's an excellent keyboard. I'll be honest though, I don't really have too much to base this on, since I don't really use keyboard and mouse for PC gaming other than with RTS games. I much prefer to be one of those annoying people who let their team down on first person shooters by being the only one with a controller. If you'd like to hear more from a gamer's perspective, I'd recommend you check out Short Circuit's review on this keyboard as well. In conclusion, the Logitech G915 is an excellent keyboard. It's good for both gaming and productivity and can easily be your go-to for both. It's quite expensive at £200, but if you are someone who spends most of their days at a desk 9 to 5, then it's definitely worth it and I can really recommend it. Well, that's it for today. If you liked it, hit like, hit subscribe and let me know in the comments what keyboard you're using and your experience with it. See you all in the next one.